Hello everyone, welcome to Easy Meet. Today we are going to discuss about the hormones of adrenal cortex. So, the adrenal glands are two small organs located retroperitoneally at the upper poles of kidney, thus also known as suprarenal glands. These two adrenal glands they vary in shape. You can remember it as letter Q. So, the right adrenal gland is pyramidal or triangular in shape whereas the left adrenal gland is elongated or semilunar in shape. So, adrenal gland on cross section it shows two distinct zones, the outer one cortex and the inner one medulla. The outer one cortex and the uh, medulla they secrete different types of hormones. So, now talking about the adrenal cortex, it can further be divided into three zones. Zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, and zona reticularis. You can remember this with the mnemonics GFR, glomerular filtration rate, which, um, which, which is from outside to inside. So now these two, three different zones, they secrete different type of hormones. The major hormone secreted by zona glomerulosa is mineralocorticoid. The major mineralocorticoid is aldosterone and the zona fasciculata which is a major reason secretes glucocorticoid the major glucocorticoid in our body is cortisol and the minor one is corticosterone now the deepest layer zona reticularis it secretes androgens but the androgens secreted by the adrenal cortex are weak androgens and they have to be peripherally converted into testosterone so this Weak androgens secreted by zona reticularis are DHEA, dihydroepiandosterone, and androstenedione. Now, let's talk in brief about the functions of all these hormones. So, aldosterone, which is the major mineralocorticoid, it is involved in sodium and water retention. It also excretes potassium ion and hydrogen ion. Now, moving on to glucocorticoid, cortisol, it uh, increases the blood glucose level by uh, increasing hepatic gluconeogenesis at the same time it reduces the uptake of glucose uh, by peripheral tissues creating in, um, insulin resistance it increases fat lipolysis and um, it leads to peripheral lipolysis whereas deposition of free fatty acids on the central axis leading to central obesity and moon phase it also increases protein catabolism it suppresses uh, immune functions of body now talking about androgens which are weak androgens uh, in male it leads to prostate growth and development of years and in female it is majorly concerned with libido now let's move on to the synthesis of hormones of adrenal cortex the three reasons of adrenal cortex they secrete three different types of hormones but the precursor for all these hormones is same that is cholesterol so the source of cholesterol in this cortical cell is majorly via the LDL optic by endocytosis and uh, it is minorly it is by the de novo synthesis of cholesterol from acetyl coenzyme A now let's move on to the reactions so the first reaction which is the conversion of cholesterol which is a 27 carbon compound uh, to pregnenolone which is a 21 carbon compound is catalyzed by side chain cleavage or desmolase. So in this side chain of cholesterol is cleaved to form a 21 carbon compound and this reaction is a very important reaction as it is the rate limiting um, reaction and this tape is stimulated by ACTH which is the major regulator of uh, cortisol synthesis and also um, androgen synthesis. So now pregnenolone will be converted to progesterone and this reaction is catalyzed by 3 beta hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase. Now let's move horizontally. Uh, pregnenolone will be converted into 17 hydroxy pregnenolone and progesterone will be converted into 17 hydroxy progesterone and this both reactions will be catalyzed by 17 alpha hydroxylase now 17 
hydroxy pregnenolone will be converted into dehydro epiandosterone and 17 hydroxy progesterone will be converted into androstenedione and this both reactions will be catalyzed by 1720 lyse so at the right end which signifies the zonal reticularis layer we have our two androgens dehydro epiandosterone and androstenedione now moving vertically uh, Progesterone will be converted into 11 deoxycorticosterone and 17 hydroxy progesterone will be converted into 11 deoxycortisol and this both reactions will be catalyzed by 21 alpha hydroxylase. Now uh, moving further down in the fasciculata layer, 11 deoxycortisol will be converted into cortisol. And this reaction will be catalyzed by 11 beta hydroxylase. Uh, now we have uh, in fasciculata layer, we have uh, cortisol, which is the major end product. Now for the synthesis of aldosterone, 11 deoxycorticosterone will be converted into corticosterone, then to 18 hydroxycorticosterone and finally to aldosterone. The first two reactions are catalyzed by 11 beta hydroxylase, whereas the last reaction, which is the conversion of corticosterone to aldosterone, is catalyzed by 18 hydroxylase, which is also known as aldosterone synthase. Uh, the major regulator of uh, aldosterone synthesis is angiotensin 2 as it stimulates this enzyme uh, so one thing must be kept in mind that is the major regulator for synthesis of cortisol and androgens is ACTH whereas the major regulator for synthesis of aldosterone is angiotensin 2. Weight limiting step of the cortical hormone synthesis is the first reaction which is catalyzed by side chain cleavage or desmodase uh, and as this reaction occurs in mitochondria it is very very important to transport the cholesterol from cytoplasm to uh, mitochondrial matrix uh, which is carried out by star protein this is the reason why the uh, Hormone synthesis is regulated at both side chain cleavage and the star protein level. Uh, and both of this uh, star protein and side chain cleavage is stimulated by ACTH. Now let's move on to the enzyme deficiencies. So the deficiency of any of the enzyme which is involved in cortisol synthesis leads to a condition known as congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Now let's see why this name has been given. So when there is a deficiency of enzyme involved in cortisol synthesis, cortisol cannot be synthesized. And as we know, the cortisol is the major negative regulator, which will give the negative feedback to hypothalamo pituitary adrenal axis. The deficiency of cortisol will inhibit this feedback, which will lead to the increased production of ACTH, leading to the stimulation of adrenal cortex, leading to the adrenal hyperplasia. Uh, there are three major enzyme deficiencies and the most common of them is the deficiency of 21 alpha hydroxylase. So what happens is when there is the deficiency of 21 alpha hydroxylase, aldosterone and cortisol cannot be synthesized. So all the intermediates prior to this block will be channeled to androgen synthesis and more and more androgens will be synthesized. So this will lead to a uh, clitoral hypertrophy people um, the child can be born with the ambiguous sex where the sex of child cannot be determined and other uh, various manifestations can be seen now the another enzyme that is commonly deficient is 11 beta hydroxylase in the deficiency of 11 beta hydroxylase there will be no synthesis of cortisol um, but there is a normal synthesis of androgens and though there is no synthesis of aldosterone but 
11 deoxycorticosterone will be formed because it is prior to this enzyme block and since it has mineralocorticoid activity we will not see any um, manifestations of deficiency of mineralocorticoid so there will be only decrease glucocorticoid activity now the last one is deficiency of 17 alpha hydroxylase in this there will be no synthesis of cortisol and sex steroid and there will be uh, increased mineralocorticoid synthesis since um, due to this block all of the intermediates will be channeled to aldosterone synthesis and it will lead to increased mineralocorticoid activity leading to the increased sodium and water retention leading to uh, circulatory overload and hypertension this brings us to the end of the video i thank you for watching this video if you found this video helpful don't forget to like share comment and subscribe